everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. In this week's vlog, I'm gonna be discussing my training and race essentials when it comes to nutrition. This is a question I get asked all the time and I do reference it in lots and lots of my vlogs, but actually I've never done a vlog where I actually reference everything in one space. So that's exactly what I'm gonna to do today and I'm gonna go through things like race day essentials, so the things I actually eat while I'm running, but also the things that I eat and rely on while I'm training and those two things don't really have very much of a crossover, so I thought I'd mention them both in one place so that you guys know, and I'm going to put everything down below in the description box as well, so you guys can check it out. Some of these items were gifted to me, some of them were not, some of them I discovered through other runners, and some of them I discovered completely by accident. So I'm just gonna put everything down below, and you guys can also let me know what your favorite items are, so that other people can kind of give things a go, because I think when you first start out running, it can be really kind of overwhelming, because the running nutrition space is humongous so it can be really difficult to know where to start and what works for one person might not work for another person so it just comes down to a little bit of trial and error first though I wanted to let you guys know about my new camera I don't know if you can tell do I look wonderful if I do it's all the camera it's not actually me looking wonderful I'm completely exhausted today because I have a bit of a cold going on so I apologize if I sound a little bit bunged up it is not the camera's fault that is my fault uh, because I went on a 20 kilometer run when I was already getting a little bit ill which is not something I would recommend anyone do um, but the camera I'm using today which I've been using actually for a few months and trialing and I wanted to really test it out before I shared it with you guys to make sure that it really was as good as I thought it was going to be it is the Nikon Z30 so the Nikon Z30 is a vlogging specific camera but it also does all sorts of different things like uh, photos as well which I'm really excited to get it to kind of get into the swing of taking more pictures while I'm out and about as well. I've been using it since August probably and I've been taking it on all of my different trips. I took it out to UTMB, I took it to the Trossachs in Scotland when I went up there in the Lake District and it was so good mainly because it is so lightweight so the whole point is that you can go around with your arm up here and I've mentioned to you guys before that when I'm running that I get like arm doms from holding my camera out vlogging especially when I'm doing an ultra marathon you know I can be out for super long and this isn't the camera that I take when I'm out and about running but even so when I'm out and about walking around and um, doing all my vlogging kind of stuff the worst thing is feeling like you can't keep your arm out there for any longer so this camera is brilliant because it's super lightweight it is meant for vloggers so if you guys have YouTube channels or kind of want to get into filming a little bit this is a great place I would say to start but it's also got some amazing features so a great place to kind of continue your vlogging journey I'm filming on it at the moment so I can't actually show you what it looks like but this is the box that it comes in it comes with all sorts of different things so it comes with the lens as well and that is the uh, 16 to 55 mil lens that I'm using at the moment and I've kind of been doing loads of research because I am definitely not a camera expert I think that vlogging and filming and photos should be accessible to people who don't necessarily have the time to research all of this kind of stuff. So I wanted something that was super easy to use and that I could literally just stick into auto and shoot, but that I could also do other cooler stuff on as well if I wanted to and as I sort of progress on my vlogging and photography journey. And this is, it kind of encompasses all of those things. So, you know, you can just stick it in auto and just start shooting, but the setting that I've got it in the moment, for example, follows me around. So the the focus box is exactly on me wherever I go. So I look like I'm having a little boogie um, wherever I go, which is super cool. So anyway, that is what I'm filming on. So if you suddenly start to see my content getting a little bit bougie, that is why. Thank you to Nikon for supporting this channel and especially for providing me with this camera because it's so good. It is so good. So if you do vlog your runs or you do vlog kind of round and about and, and you're starting up a YouTube channel, definitely go check this out. It is also one of the more affordable cameras out there. So that's great because some of them are so expensive. It is so painful. Um, so when I, when I was like trying to up my game a little bit with vlogging, I was looking at the cameras and I was like, oh my God, I'm just going to have to quit. This is a great place to be right now with this camera. So 
thank you Nikon and um, thank you all for watching as well because it is you guys that make this happen. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started talking about my race fuel because that is probably what most people on here are interested in. Like I said, one thing that works for one person might not work for other people, but let me get started with what works for me. So my priority when I'm racing is to be able to get food down as and when I need it. And when it comes to short races, that's fairly easy. I'm very, very happy having the same thing for an entire two hour race. When it comes to doing things that are six hours, eight hours, 10 hours, that kind of stuff, I get a little bit tired of having one food. So I tend to have a mix of stuff so that my taste buds don't get bored. And anyone who's done an ultra marathon or even you know a longer, longer run or a race or a walk probably will know that if your taste buds get tired, it's quite difficult to stomach certain foods. So my absolute go-to two pieces of food are Nuru and Lucho Dietos. And I love both of these, both for their taste and what they do and what they provide, but also for their sustainability credentials. So this is Nuru. I think they've actually just changed their packaging. Oh my God. So there's the dog. She heard food, so she is here. This is Nuru. They changed their packaging recently, but the great thing about them is, so they come in this cardboard box and they don't have any wrappers. So that is amazing because obviously when you're out on the trails, one of the worst things when you're running is to see other people's litter and rubbish everywhere. I absolutely hate it. I think it's kind of unacceptable actually if you're on the trails to be throwing your rubbish everywhere. The great thing about these is they don't have any rubbish so nothing can fall out of your pocket. Sometimes it happens accidentally, not with these. These are coated in beeswax. And let me tell you, these are the only foods that I eat that are not strictly vegan. And the reason for that is that I believe it is better to have a product that doesn't have any plastic wrapping than a product that has lots of plastic wrapping that is vegan. That kind of doesn't stand with my nutrition in general, but when it comes to running nutrition, I think these are the bomb and they taste really good. They're a little flapjacky kind of thing and they've got lots of different flavors. So this one's mixed berry, then there's salted caramel, their nuts one is amazing as well. It's got loads of hazelnuts in, kind of reminds me of Nutella. I love those and I really rate their sustainability credentials. So they are are great. The next one that I mentioned was Lucho Dietos. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but it's been several years and no one has told me otherwise. So I apologize to my friends in Colombia if I am pronouncing it wrong. So these are a guava treat, snack, sweet, whatever you want to call it. This is kind of an alternative to gels. I don't like gels. I find them sticky. I find them kind of gross to stomach. And unless I'm doing a shorter race or really need a kick of energy at the end of a race, I tend to avoid gels where possible. These ones are solid guava blocks. They have loads and loads of sugar in them. They have lots of different flavors as well, although they kind of all taste like sugar. And the great thing about them is that the uh, wrapping is 100% compostable. So this is the sort of thing that you could chuck at the side of the trail and it would disappear in no time at all. It is literally made from a leaf. Thoroughly recommend checking these ones out as well. The only downside to them is that even though this is in a cardboard box, sometimes it comes wrapped in plastic. I don't love that. I think um, uh, shipping is quite difficult without any plastic whatsoever possible but difficult. Recommend these. I've recommended them to loads of people and I see people turning out to races with them and it makes me so happy because I love to see my recommendations used by you guys. If you have used anything that I've recommended and loved it, please do put it down in the comments because it really makes me happy. Sometimes I feel like I'm giving out recommendations into the ether and I, and I never hear back from anyone. So it would be really good to know if you've tried any of these things and you like them. So next thing is... Saurine, speaking of vegan items that are wrapped in plastic, Saurine. <laughs> I don't have this all the time. This is for really kind of longer races where I really just want something very stodgy and sugary and carby and delicious. Um, I'm absolutely obsessed with Saurine. They've got loads of different ones. They've got the big ones, they've got the small ones. I took this um, on Race to the Tower, which was my 52 miler and I never got bored of it ever. So it was just amazing. And I would also eat these when I'm not running. They are just really, really tasty. They are wrapped in plastic, not ideal, but I thoroughly recommend. If you haven't tried them yet, what are you doing? Where have you been living? They are incredible. Next is human food. This is not plastic. This is wrapped in a compostable wrapper. So you, I can stick this in my home compost bin and it will biodegrade. And I know that because I have done that for the last year and a half and none of it is left in my compost bin. So that's pretty quick. This is as heavy as 
food gets when I do ultra marathons. It's basically like a mush of nuts and dates and all sorts of deliciousness. It is really, really heavy, but when it comes to getting in as many calories as possible, human food is a great place to start. I would tend to have this on a slower, longer run. I definitely wouldn't have this if I was racing, say, a half marathon or anything less than that. Probably a slower 30K, 40K, 50K, 80K, that kind of stuff is where I would be eating this sort of stuff. I rate their sustainability credentials and I think they taste good. They can get a little bit much because it's quite a big bar. So I tend to eat it in either kind of thirds or, you know, half at a time and not overdo it on those. The next one, I'm not going to show you a picture of because it is peanut butter and jam. Everyone has their kind of win wonderful thing that they eat when they're on an ultra. And for me, it's PBJ sandwiches. I love it when races have great aid stations and in Race to the Tower I ate peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Just made it when I was out at the aid station and it has a great mix of fats, carbohydrates and sugar and um, simple carbs. Because of that it was the perfect thing to be eating as I was running. You do have to get used to eating as you're running in your training but if you're doing an ultra you probably will have done plenty of that in your training and it won't be an issue. So that was something that I really enjoyed and I just want to give it a special mention. It's not something you buy, you know, packaged pre-packaged whatever but it is absolutely delicious and if you've not tried it before the Americans definitely did get this all right so I can thoroughly recommend it. Honourable mention to Tailwind. I've never actually tried Tailwind but this is something speaking of struggling to eat whilst you're running this is something that I would thoroughly recommend checking out if you do struggle to eat whilst you're on the move. Tailwind is a powder you put in your water. They have flavourless versions which basically just provide calories. I think it's a great thing to do if you especially struggle with your stomach while you're on runs and also if you are doing really 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 long stuff where it's kind of impossible to get in enough calories I think if you stick that in your water you're getting sips of calories every so often and almost everyone I know swears by it so I haven't checked it out because I don't struggle to eat but I definitely will be doing that as I kind of move towards longer and longer races um, especially stuff like in the middle of the night where your stomach is definitely not prepped to eat so I will be checking that out ASAP I will let you know what I think as well once I've given it a go. So like I mentioned I try not to have gels as much as possible. I have tried various different ones before and all of them have been fine especially when I was on my last day of Croatia and I had a little nap at the side of the trail completely bonked and had a gel to get me going again. That was really good and that's the sort of situation that I would use it in although preferably before bonking rather than afterwards because <laughs> it's not great having got to that position but this is something I do use instead of gel. So this is a gel made mix by Active Root. Again, compostable packaging. It is possible. I don't know why more brands haven't gone down this route. And this is one reason that I really want to support Active Root. This can make multiple gel mixes. And what you do is you mix it in, they've got these soft flasks, but smaller, 150 mil, and you mix it all in there and it creates a gel. And the great thing about it is that it's not just single use and you don't have to chuck away the gel wrapper afterwards. Um, so you can mix it in there and then just stick it in your running pack and then you have three gels per one of those soft flasks. And that's great because it means that you are not worrying about having loads of different gels on you. You just got one and it's also got lots of water content in it as well. This is ginger flavor and the great thing about that is also that it settles your stomach. So it's a win-win from me. Um, I have to say I find this a little bit too sickly sweet, but actually when I need it, I need it. When I do need it, it doesn't feel too bad because I think my body is just craving as much sugar as possible. So yeah, thoroughly recommend checking these guys out, especially if you like ginger. So on to electrolytes. Electrolytes are absolutely vital when you are running, especially if it's hot and especially if you're going long. It is electrolyte imbalance, I think, that causes my swollen hands. So I haven't got it down yet, but that's not for lack of trying. I do love having my electrolytes. So what I do is I tend to mix in electrolytes into one of my soft flasks and have the other one just plain water and that way I don't get too bored of having something kind of sugary. But the electrolyte that I use in all of my races is also Active Root. It is ginger flavor again, so again settles the stomach and it's in biodegradable compostable packaging as well. This does quite a long time worth of electrolyte mixes. So this has done me like the whole season and I'm not even two thirds of the way through. So that will do me at least until the end of the year, possibly into early next year. And then I've also got these two as well. These two I have for after runs usually because I find effervescent things when I'm putting them in soft flasks, obviously they have a build up of air and that's quite difficult to do while you're on the move. So that one, the active route doesn't have 
any of those issues you just stick it in and you mix in water and it's done these ones i have for when i come back from a run or the day after a long run where my electrolytes still might be a little bit imbalanced this one's fizz i love this one it's got vitamins and minerals in it as well so it kind of feels like one of those vitamin tabs but also has electrolytes in it use this throughout the summer to get rid of some cramping that i was struggling with and it helped within like one week so absolutely incredible cis electrolyte tabs are really great i don't rate the flavor as much but they're a really well regarded brand loads of people use them my dad loves them for his cycling as well and i just wanted to mention them in there in case you don't like the flavor of any of the other ones so yeah definitely recommend checking these out I've, these got me through the last day of Croatia as well okay so that's it for race day nutrition now moving on to things that i swear by while i'm in training and nutrition while training is so important i can't stress it enough there is no point doing all your runs if your nutrition is not on point because your body just will not be able to do anything with that training it won't be able to assimilate it like into your muscles and into your lungs and into your mitochondria it's really important that you get your nutrition right and it's been something that i've been working on um i've been plant-based for six over six years now and because of that i sometimes feel like i have to work especially hard but then again because i have to work especially hard i feel like i've got it down to a t so these are the things that i swear by i feel like they really help make the most of my training and um with training as hard as it is I definitely want to make the most of it so first of all protein the question I get asked all the time so the protein that I use first and foremost is Vivo Nutrition I used to be sponsored by these guys I am not and I still buy it so I feel like that says a lot about how good I think they are I still have a discount code though so if you guys do want to use my discount code I will put it down in the description below this is my favorite one the salted maca caramel so I use protein after really intense runs or intense gym sessions just to make sure that I'm getting enough if you have too much protein your body just wheeze it out it's just kind of like excess calories so I don't necessarily feel like I have to have it every single day but when I do a really intense gym session or or a really long run or an intense run like interval training I feel like I need a little bit extra so I tend to have that that's a perform one they have one that's called whole and that one's got loads of vitamins and minerals in it and I kind of have that almost like not a meal replacement but like an additional meal on top of my three four meals a day that one's really good as well they've got a caramel biscuit flavor which is delicious so in the summer I've actually been mixing those in my blender with frozen fruits and a little bit of oat milk and that is really really tasty and I also means that I feel like I'm getting all the goodness all the nutrients in one big shake and it's sometimes easier to get down you after a big run than like a full blown meal alongside that I have started taking creatine I've actually stopped taking creatine recently because I've been under the weather but generally I've been um, taking creatine and it is supposed to improve well it definitely improves power output but it's also supposed to improve endurance the jury is out as of yet but it's definitely been helping me in the gym and things that help me in the gym I think will then go on to help my running in a kind of more roundabout way there are pros and cons to creatine in terms of like longevity lifespan it's a little bit unknown so you know not everyone will be pro creatine but I'm trying it out at the moment. I feel like it will help with my performance and anything that helps my performance is probably a good thing so long as it doesn't have too many detrimental effects. And so far I've not had any detrimental effects. So if you do want to try out creatine, obviously check the research as I have done, but it seems pretty good at the moment and um, so I'll continue taking that once my training restarts again lastly on this one I have been also taking the vegan multi-nutrient this has all the sorts of things that you think you need vitamin b12 which all veggie vegans should really be taking vitamin d3 uh, which anyone in the northern hemisphere well no anyone in the kind of north of the world uh, where you don't get a huge amount of sun in winter should definitely be taking iodine as well vegans should really be taking that iron probably should be taking that calcium yeah and then other things like selenium zinc k2 vitamin a riboflavin which is another b vitamin choline don't know much about choline but the rest of those i kind of feel like although i might not need all of them it's also not that expensive to get a multivitamin and take it every day and if that helps me be healthy then that's probably a good thing so that is also from vivo but i also want to give a shout out to my friend's brand retrition rihanna lamba is a nutritionist and she's created a brand called retrition everything is evidence-based and it is really 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 good so she's got one that is perfect it's like a multi-nutrient again um, but perfect for veggie vegan 
vegans or anyone who feels like they might be deficient in various things. Obviously, you should be getting as much as you can from your food, but no harm in taking a multi-nutrient when it's like this, if you feel like you need that little extra added boost. And lastly, this is not exactly a supplement, but I use caffeine very tactically. I don't drink caffeinated coffee every day. I don't drink it very often at all. I save it for really intense sessions that I feel like I'm going to struggle through or races. And the point in that is that the caffeine actually has an effect as and when I do those things. When I drink coffee every single day, it kind of makes me jittery, a little bit anxious, not particularly, it's not great for me. But if I have it before a run sporadically like once a week or once every two weeks then I feel like it really has a benefit and there's so much evidence to show that caffeine helps endurance and speed power etc etc in fact there's so much evidence that actually I think it was banned as uh, coffee caffeine was banned as a kind of performance enhancing drug for a really long time then they realized that they couldn't stop people having their morning cuppers and so many things have caffeine in that you wouldn't expect they unbanned it so i definitely make the most of that by drinking coffee kind of tactically so it's probably not something you would expect to have in here but it means also that because i don't drink it day in day out i get the benefits of having like good sleep for example because i don't even when i do have coffee i never have it after midday because even if you don't feel like you can feel the effects it still affects your sleep so I don't drink it every day. I drink it when I'm doing really intense sessions and then when I'm racing as well. And when I am racing, I drink quite a lot of it. I think the tolerance for caffeine is like up to 360 milligrams has a really beneficial effect. And then beyond that, that's a lot of coffee, by the way. Beyond that, it starts to have more of a detrimental effect. This is definitely something that I feel like I had to put a disclaimer in. Check how your body responds before having it on race day because it does speed things up. And if you are running, like obviously you want to be sped up, but your gut does not want to be sped up. That's something you definitely have to check in advance. I know this from personal experience and I know that every other runner has also had a similar experience with excess caffeine on race day, getting a little bit overexcited with things. Definitely check in training how your body's going to respond to that. But I think that's one to add in because it really does help. You need to get it right. I thought I'd share how I do that. So that is it for this week's vlog. That was kind of a whistle stop tour of my nutrition. Obviously good food makes up the bulk of my nutrition, but this is the sort of stuff Stuff that I feel like adds that extra one or two percent on top so thought I'd share it with you I hope that helps I would love to hear your favorite snacks to have while you're on the go oh, I forgot to mention trail mix always trail mix trail mix is great put your faves down below in the comments and then other people can come and check it out as well let me know if you have any top nutrition tips please don't comment on my personal preferences of eating a plant-based diet this is a decision that I have made based on lots and lots and lots of different factors and a lot of research so you do you and I I will do me. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely go check out those brands as well. I'm going to list all of them below so hopefully you guys can check them out and do your own research and etc etc. If you did enjoy this video please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I'll be back with plenty more running videos coming your way. Again a nice big thank you to Nikon for sending their incredible Z30 camera. I'm absolutely loving it so far. I really have been making the most of it over the past couple of months and I plan on taking it to plenty more races and various other sort of day in the life sort of vlogs that will be coming up soon as well. Thanks again and I will see you next time. Bye!